Hey everybody, this is John Redcorn, King of the Hill, and you're listening to and watching You Suck. Do me a favor, don't touch that channel. Don't change it, don't take it like you did my land. Hello, everyone. Go on, Tom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, hey, guys. Welcome to What's the Difference podcast. I'm Tom Bruno. And I'm Alex Whiteley. <laughs> and, and Jonathan Joss. <laughs> and today we're joined with Jonathan Joss. Um, you might know him from my, one of my favorite television shows ever in the world, King of the Hill. You might be a big, huge Parks and Rec uh, fan, which you might know him from that. Or the million other fucking things he's been on on IMDb, which, by the way, your your list is huge. It's it's, it's, get, it's getting longer. It's getting longer, man. You know, uh, uh, with the COVID thing going on, getting a little shorter, you know. Um, but uh, for anybody is watching this are probably wondering what the bump on my head is i'm doing some construction here at the house I was on a little pissed was on the chair chair broke down i went in, in other words but it's a good thing is, is, is i broke the fall with my head it's true it's true you yeah. you are you are a fucking man's man i told you that earlier i was just like god damn dude like I, if me i stub my toe and i'm like i can't do oh, it you ought to see my toe i i what'd you do to your toe the fuck said, you do to your toe? When I went down, dude, it, it was everything I could do. And a hand. Clearly, Jeez. this dude. was the fall from the, you know, Empire State I fell from grace, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan yes, sir. Or John, which one do you prefer, sir? Jonathan, please. All right, Jonathan, perfectly. Now, you, sir, are a Native American. Now, I got I got to ask, when that comes to acting, is that um, a benefit or is that a hindrance when it comes to you, sir? Uh, well, I'm Tarahumara tribe. Um, it, 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 it closes the gap of work that I can do, but it also helps as well. Um, so it, it, it's a blessing, man. I mean, anybody that you are and, and you respect who you are, um, you know, not a lot of respect for myself, but I respect other people somewhat. Um, not necessarily their stuff, but, but as human beings, man. But um, I'm blessed to be able to work um, under a certain umbrella of work. So it, it, it doesn't hinder. Um, it, it really helps me move forward. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, and voice work, where does that come for you? Where does that start? What, what was the first voice role or acting? Oh, we'll start acting all together. Where did that begin for you, Jonathan? Oh, it began like I saw a play when I was in the uh, fifth grade. And I realized that uh, I could do, I could do that. You know, it was, it was fun to be somebody else uh, and take mm -hmm. on a different identity. Because I mean, I, I'm very insecure. I'm jealous as fuck. Um, so when I'm someone else, I'm able to disregard my own characteristics and take on uh, those of a character that I'm portraying. I relate to that, weirdly. Um, I'm not nowhere near um, experience, as experienced as you, Jonathan. I've done a little bit of acting, um, but um, <laughs> the acting I did, um, I, I, I portray a character for a whole day. It's an immersive acting um uh, the, the tourist attraction. So I'm there all day playing the same character for the whole day. And when really? you come up, when you come out of character, it's very weird because you've been portraying this different person all day. I, I relate to what you're saying about being someone else. It's uh, quite cool. This is the chair. Uh, <laughs> you fucked that chair up, bro. Yeah, oh, the like, chair uh, fucked me up. <laughs> Look at that. Ah. Yep. No. And then what happened was I broke the chair and then I got popped by the old lady, to be honest. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> she's oh, like, that man. was my favorite chair. Yeah. That was no, yes, it's a new chair too. And she's, you know, you know. No. So I, I had to I had to be able to uh I'll pay for it later, you know. <laughs> yeah. See? That's yeah. what she got me with this. Nice. That's <laughs> good to know. It's good to know, you know. It's, it's, um now when we first tried doing this, um little little background uh, story. I reached out to Jonathan. Um, a few months back, um, I saw that you were very active on a Facebook group that I was, which was the King of the Hill uh, fan yes. group. 
And I, I couldn't believe, like, I was like, holy shit, somebody from King of the Hill is actually on this fucking thing. No way. And I and I reached out when you were such a laid back and cool dude. And I was like, would you Not want that to cool. come on? You're very, very cool, dude. Don't belittle yourself mm, like that. You're don't don't, 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 cool don't let the facade fool you, man. <laughs> you know, is, I'm, an, I'm an asshole. Well, that might be. But you know what, man? You agreed to come on this stupid show. So you got to have some. Because you're an asshole. Cool. <laughs> all right, all right. I like I mean, it. Right. Isn't this called the asshole show? It, yeah. it is actually. Yeah. It's, the, it's the asshole podcast. That's the only reason we call it. You suck. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because we do. Um, so we we reached out. We communicated. Um, we were gonna do a, a show, and then like I didn't hear from you for a couple days, and I was like, oh man, I guess he didn't really want to do the show. You I ran off and out. got married. You told exactly. You ruined my story, motherfucker. Yeah, oh, you sorry, totally I did. forgot. I told you that. You absolutely did. And he gets back with me because no, no it, it was such a fucking nice thing for you to reach back out and be like, hey, man, I'm sorry about that. But I, I went and got hitched. And I'm yes. like, what? What? And yes. I mean, congratulations. But holy shit, dude. Good for you. And he was like, yeah, dude, I still want to do the show. I was like, oh, awesome. Let me we'll introduce you to my wife, Lori. Hey. Hey. Lori. Yeah. Come over here. But don't hit me. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Video. Yes, go on it. Here's my wife. She's a, she's a, she's a, we've been working on the house. I'm a mess. Hello, no, no, don't worry wife. about it. Hello, hello. Hey. Hi. We hello look there. like this all the time. Oh. So you're oh, you're you're a bright star on this, ma'am. It, uh, she's incredible, man. She puts up with me every fucking day. So, yeah. what's it like? Because I mean, like I'm a like a smidge, like, and I mean, like um, like a spit in the ocean Indian. Um, my mom's uh, great grandmother was Abenaki. Um, uh -huh. which, you know, you, you know, she has the picture and all that type of stuff. So I have very, very little, um, knowledge of anything that is, um, Native American. What's it like being like a man that, you know, is part of something so amazingly important to the history of America? Um, it, it, it's, it's nice to know that you're indigenous to where you walk. You know, it's nice to be able to say, you know what, when I'm dead. I'm going to go into the dirt, you know, where, where, you know, our people came from, man. Um, there's, a, there's a big responsibility and I, I don't do it really well. Um, I don't do a lot of the spiritual stuff for the reason that I, I, I'm, I'm a, it keeps me less dangerous. You know what I mean? That way I, I can't teach anyone anything. Um, you know, I, I, I don't represent my people to the best of their ability. But when I do, um, I try to do it in a positive way. Um, and sometimes I don't. So, and, 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 and people, they, they get a certain feel for you. For example, uh, I one time was working on a movie one time and uh, it's not so much that the director asked my assistants with weather, you know, um, he didn't, he didn't mean it in a bad way. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you, you ask a Christian to pray for you. Okay. You know, like the other day I saw a guy that had a little uh, uh, medallion when, when uh, my wife and I were, were on location in Alpine, Texas. Um, and I saw the guy and I asked, I saw his, his head, a Virgin Mary around his neck. I said, hey, man, I said, can you can you throw a prayer down for me and my lady? Because we're going back to San Antonio. Bro, that prayer, we were doing 95, 100 miles per hour for 300 miles, man. I mean, we made it. We were like smoking in the bandit, man. I, I, I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, of course, I, I was uh, 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 the Jimmy Reed character, uh, Jerry, Jerry Reed character, mm. and she was cruising behind me, and we just had a good time, man. I did, I, I've got a '95 Impala Super Sport, and uh, yeah. I was, and she's got a nice uh, 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 Cadillac. So that V8 engine just roared. It was like America <laughs> at its best, you know. So it's it, the responsible of being a native person. Um, is it people look at you in a stereotypical way, mm. you know, um, which is not always a good thing. You know, like if I have a drink, I'm a drunk, <laughs> you know, um, do you have a casino? Yeah. Um, very stereotypical things, but there is a pride in that stereotypical idea because mm. I look at my elders and, and the people that are spiritual and uh, I like learning their, from them. I like, like, like hearing their stories. Um, at the same time, I, I, I don't take on the responsibility. Like somebody will say, hey, can, you know, you, do you do this? Do you do this certain ceremony? Uh, I can't afford to do those ceremonies because, number one, my life isn't on the – there's a road called the Red Road. 
Uh, and that's the way that native people, the road that native people walk. I'm trying to get a little more light here. The wife will shut the door on me. Uh, yeah. So the, the, it's called the red road, man. And in mm -hmm. order to walk the red road, you have to dedicate yourself to, to a certain way of life. And uh, I don't do that. You know, I can't, okay. I, I, I'm not clean enough to, to take on that responsibility, man. Um, but it still feels good to know that I am from the earth, you know, um, mm -hmm. Does, does it feel like there's uh, we've been on the TV? I mean, on movies, is there an added responsibility to, or pressure to have that responsibility for you, or has there been both? There's got a huge responsibility because sometimes directors or or, or the script will ask that we act a certain way. Um, for example, on Parks and Recreation, um, there's a scene that's the doobie doo when I throw uh, we do the blessing ceremony. Yeah. Um, a gentleman comes up to me, the 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 the, the prop prop master, prop assistant, comes to me and he hands me this little tray of stuff. He goes, um, "My boss told me to tell you that it is cookie mix," and he had no idea what that meant. And to me, it meant so much because you see, a lot of times they'll give you actual tobacco. I mean, it's a way that we pray, and they'll give you the things that we actually use. It's like mm. on stage, you don't use a real Bible. You know, it's the same thing for Native people. We try not to do the ceremony or we don't want to do the ceremonies, you know, as a, as, as a form of entertainment. And it meant so much to me that this man knew that and gave me cookie mix to sprinkle around, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, because it, it, it made it less of a responsibility for me. Because sometimes people will give you tobacco and you're like, you know what, I really don't want to use this because this is what we actually use. So there mm -hmm. is a responsibility there. Um, the characters I have portrayed are very stereotypical. I play, you know, Indian on a horse, Indian falling off a horse, Indian falling off a chair. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I do these, 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 these jobs, but I do it with a certain amount of pride. For example, mm. when I did Magnificent Seven, uh, somebody said, oh, you're the bad guy. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm a, oh, you're the killer. I'm a good killer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm a good, I'm a good at what I do. So in acting, whether you play a serial killer or you play a doctor, you try to play it the best you can. I mean, I have played, you know, native people that have issues, but under, under that underlining issue is actually the idea of a real person. So you have to bring a sense of reality to it at the same time, a sense of responsibility. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to do, I mean, if you, for example, if you play a native person that happens to have an alcohol problem, you know, why does he have that problem? He's not just a drunk Indian. Years ago, I got hit uh, by a car, uh, a Korean driver. I'm walking across the road and a Korean, you know, they can't drive with the shit. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I got hit. <laughs> I think I you're got, allowed to say that, bro. You got this. Yes. <laughs> I got hit. Boom. And it ended up going to court. We had a trial, the whole bit. And I remember being on the stand and the attorney says, okay, Jonathan, uh, it was really great. We started, the, we, we, let me back up. We started the um, trial showing my demo reel. You know, me on a horse, me doing all these wonderful things because we wanted the, the, the jury to get a sense of who I was. Mm. And I remember standing, you know, sitting, you know, being questioned by the other attorney. And he goes, so, uh, Mr. Joss, he goes, uh, where were you exactly? I said, I was crossing the street. Uh-huh. And he showed a picture. Is this the intersection that you were crossing? I said, yes, sir. He goes, uh-huh. And what is on the other side of the street? And I knew exactly what he was going to say. And I asked him, are you calling me a drunk Indian? <gasps> oh, because <laughs> on the other end of the street was a bar. But you're, And but he you're... said, oh, you said it, not me. I said, because isn't that the question you're asking? He goes, yes, there was a bar on the opposite side. Were you going to the bar? What, what's, what's you the should have counted with, if... are you a cunt? Yes. No, but it was, it, was, it, was, it was great. It was great because I was able to tell him, yes, I was going to the bar, sir. He goes, aha, uh -huh. so you were drunk. I said, no, I was going to the bar, not coming from the bar. Fucking I was idiot. going to go drink. Now, if I would walk any other way, then you can call me a drunk Indian. 
I was just sure. an Indian looking for a drink at that time until this Korean hit me. I don't understand that. I mean, I, I guess it's because like, you know, the way I was raised, uh, I, I'm, you know, not a guy that's ever been any way, shape or form racist. You know, everyone's, you know, we're just people, white man. privilege, white privilege. What? Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Alex. So we're all just people. And that's the way my mom would want me to say it. Now, I don't understand why people can still hold on to those very old, you know, fucking stereotypes from the 1800s when that's clearly not necessarily the case. And of course, just like white people, just like black people, just like anyone in this fucking country, we all have problems and there's gonna be some of the good ones and some of the bad ones so you can't it's just like take... being from texas Are, yeah, you have a yeah. horse you know do you have a gun all these questions always come up we, and, we... And it, it's it, it, it's nice that you said that native people are always looked at in the western time period think yeah. about it you know you got to wear the vest you know Feather, you know, it's like being English. Like you guys eat fish and chips all the time. Exactly. You know right. I mean? Okay. Okay. Right. This is perfect. This is perfect because I was just going to say, fucking stereotypes happen whether right. you want them to or not. Right. Because you know, I'm telling you, uh, we are we're either sitting there sipping tea and talking about the weather. Oh, how's Madge these right. days? Oh, she's fantastic. Thank you, darling. You know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now I was gonna. I had a joke to go here, but uh, I got to find it it's here somewhere. Oh. oh. Donuts. No, honey, where's the beer? It's a good question. Where's the beer? So I gotta ask Jonathan. Um, yes, how the fuck? I mean, I I understand that the original actor um, unfortunately passed away, and that's who I, I came. Victor Aaron, Aaron, man. Victor Aaron, thank you very much. Victor Aaron. Um, I mean, he was as big and beautiful as big and beautiful can be. You know. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not. You know, for example, I'll probably get in trouble for doing this, but for Mr. Victor Aaron. You know, cheers. Fucking A, right? Cheers, man. man. Cheers. Cheers, oh, brother. I got, I got the IPA Victor on the go too. Cheers, cheers, brother. I mean, hit, that man was a big, beautiful, beautiful man. So yeah, he 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 was the first voice, and I was lucky enough to to, to precede him. I proceed no to follow after him. He was great, man. Now, how does like how does something like that come to pass? Um it, it just he 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 passed away in a car accident. Mm -hmm. And uh I remember I was working with him on uh, Comanche Moon or uh, Dead Man's Walk, and he was telling me about this great um, uh, uh, voiceover that he was going to do. He was so happy, man. He was so happy about the character. He was going to change his life. Uh, we're going to help his kid get in college. I mean, just it was a big break for him. And uh, then, you know, he did one episode and then uh, passed away in a car accident. So it went full circle. Uh, they had another audition. I didn't, I didn't make the first audition. I had come back to Texas because at the time I was madly in love um, with a lady, unlike serious love like this one, just mad. Um, and I was coming into San Antonio. I get a call. Hey, you got an audition for voiceover. I said, great, I'll do it. And they said, where are you? I said, San Antonio, I'll fly. You go, Sorry, audition tomorrow, can't make it. So hence that relationship fell through. It wasn't true love like I have now. And ended up going back to Los Angeles and got the job. You know, I was in L.A. for a year. The ex told me, you know, you've been there a year. You haven't done anything. Come back. And I did. And then I go back. I get this gig. And like every man, after I got the gig, I'm calling her going, I got a job. I got a job. Will you love me again? <laughs> um, which I'm very thankful that she didn't because at 55 years old, I found the woman in my dreams. You know? Yeah, man. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, now thank you. Thank you. But, you know, I, like, again, a typical guy. I don't deserve it, you know. Yeah, and I, I don't. I don't. I don't deserve this woman. Um, I do everything possible to piss her off, you know. But um, I think she knows I love her. Um, no, I know you love her. Thing, I'll man, tell her you right know? now. She, he loves uh, you, man. Just flat <laughs> out, like this man clearly is in love with you. No, man, I'm now, crazy jealous, man. I mean, she's beautiful, you know good man see i say these things about my wife too because i'm like hey she's just beautiful and she's also insanely jealous it's it's weird because i'm just like not that guy it's never been my like my my forte and um she's always just been crazy jealous and I, before like i was like this thin beautiful goddess that i am right now i used to be this really fat dude and like i never understood i'm like why are you fighting so hard for me you're ridiculous you should be with a doctor or something you silly girl um now i did you know when you were doing King of the Hell how important it was going to be in general? Because I, I got to tell you, Jonathan, like I, I've said this before, 
um, the the um, Sunday night lineup on Fox. You know, animation domination. And yes, animation. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes, it fucking was animation domination. King of the Hill, uh, Simpsons, uh, Family Guy. At one point later on down the road and all that right. Futurama. These were yep. the shows of my childhood, man. They, they they are so, and they're still like I still watch King of the Hill. Like to this day, I, I when my kids are out way and shit, I'll be like, fuck you, I'm gonna watch King of the Hill. Now, did you know how important that was gonna be when you did it? Or do you is it something you find out along the way? I, I knew that it was gonna be special because of Victor Aaron. You know, I always wanted to be him. He was a big, handsome native man, muscles everywhere. I mean, he would walk down the street, man, and girls would just fall, literally, just fall down looking at this man. He was so handsome. Victor Aaron, Google it, look at the old picture of him. And I knew it was special because the character was 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 drawn after him. Um, I did not respect the show when I did it, though. You know, I I, I was underpaid. Um, we did what seven years, five years, six years of, of of him being in that relationship, and I would do episodes where I would just climb out of the window, you know, and and I would make you know a couple of thousand dollars, but it wasn't funny anymore. I had a little old lady in Tuba City. Tell me, you know, that's not funny. And before, boom. So I went to producers and said, hey, we got to change this. John Redcorn was the only character that uh, had issues, self-moral issues. Mm -hmm. um, but they never tried to make him better. I remember Fox was telling me, you know what? They call me money because, oh, not me money. John Redcorn was money. Meaning anytime he would snuck, jump out of the window or go in the window was a laugh. Mm. So to take that away from him. That relationship meant he no longer had that go-to joke. So I went from five or six episodes a season to like one or two, man. It, it took a big bite. I mean, like they, they were asking me, you know, can you give me ideas? What, what do you want to go with it? So I created the band, the John Redcorn band, uh, Big Mountain Fudge Cake. That was yeah. all my idea. That was all my, there's a hole in my pocket where my money should go. Well, there's a hole. Uh, there's a hole. There's a big old hole. <laughs> so I helped create that. Um so, yes, I knew it was a special show just because of the amount of talent that the show mm. had. Did not respect it, though. I respect it now because I do more interaction with the fans. Um, mm. I've had people tell me things. You know what? We used to watch that show until my dad went blind and we would sit and listen to it together. Like, wow, man. You know, um, so appreciation, you know, and, and like I said, like in my relationship, you know, I, I want to appreciate it while it's happening. But I always have a problem appreciating things when they're in my hands. You know, I, I won't appreciate them until they're gone. You know, and that's not a good not a good trait to have. Uh, I'm trying to change. Um, you know, but sometimes you got to fall and hit your head uh, to realize that uh, <laughs> life is kind of short. And uh, one day, you know, she won't have me, and that'll be cool. You know, <clears throat> she'll finally be happy. <laughs> Now I don't think so, man. I, I would be I would be incredibly sad, and I'm glad that you said that that was you that made that change because that was actually something I was going to follow up with, which is yes. because I've watched it so many times. John Redcorn does have this amazing story arc. He starts off as such a you know such a Thank one kind of like po trick pony, which is you know he's fucking Nancy Gribble or whatever, right. um, and then uh, eventually throughout the seasons you become good friends with Dale, the husband, the yes. man that you've been kind of wronging this entire time. Yes, and then exactly. like you're you're the one that calls off. The relationship you you no you're no, no. Nancy, Nancy does it. I want to call it off, and they went. We can't do it, and then she ends up breaking off the relationship. You know, yes. a native person the, can't do the right thing. It has to be the white person. Well, no, but the second time <laughs> it was you because Nancy was going to go back to you because she was losing her hair. She had to go back to right. fucking John Redcorn, and yes, you yes. were the one that was like, you know, no, I can't do this. And also, yeah. like your your story arc um, went from just being who you know John Redcorn to like being like you know torn up about the fact that he can't have a relationship with his son. Um, right. You it, it, be, being in a band, Big Mountain Fudge Cake, which was some of my favorite stuff. You got to play with. Tom Petty, which is, you know, fucking. Oh, man, that was amazing. Yes. Yes. It was a lot of what fun. What was man. that like? Tom Petty was amazing. He always had things in his hand, so you couldn't shake hands with him. You go to shake his hand, he'd have, you know, stuff in his hand. Go, oh, hey, you doing? Hey, you doing? You know, <laughs> uh, the big deal was there. We're sitting there. And I'm looking over at Tom Petty. I'm like, holy shit, that's Tom Petty, man. You know, yeah. holy geez. And all of a sudden, I see his kid get up, walk around the desk, come to me at the table read. He goes, can I get your autograph? I'm like, <laughs> dude, your dad is Tom fucking Petty, you know, <laughs> you know, and he just like goes, oh, he's just my dad. Can I have your autograph? So 
So I put, you know, Tom Petty's kid, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. You know, and, and, and the show always had special guests. I remember sitting uh next to 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 uh 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 a uh, uh, famous guy, uh damn it, Pratt, not Chris Pratt, uh the other guy, uh the, the good looking white guy that played Boomhauer's brother. Oh, uh, uh that was oh geez, uh that was uh what's his face? Uh, uh, uh Ocean's Eleven and he uh, yes, Brad Pitt. Ocean's Eleven Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Dude, I'm sitting next to Brad Pitt, and he's like, "Hey, John Redcorn." I'm like, "Hey, oh, I mean, I mean, it was amazing to the, to see the, the the stars that worked on the show, and it was like, Jesus, man. I mean, he's you know, he's he's a woman guy too, man. Woo! Oh yeah, well, what's 100%. it? What's it like going uh, going from like a guy looking for work, any 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 sort of roles he can get to everyone just running up to him, and be like, "Hey, it's John Redcorn. There he is. What's that like?" Uh, it's an amazing thing. If you don't know what I do, give me 20 seconds and I'll tell you, you know, it's, it's, it's I do it. I mean, you, a cop pulls me over. You ever watch King of the Hill? You know, I order a burger. <laughs> ever watch King of the Hill? I mean, for example, yesterday when we were coming uh, from Alpine, we went to a Dairy Queen and I, I asked my wife, I said, you want, she goes, I want a dilly bar. Great. So we went in <clears throat> tandem. I went there. We just sat there eating and I ended up getting a large ice cream cone, three tacos and a dilly bar. And I said, the dilly bar is for my wife in the behind me. So I pull up. The guy's like, wow, man, is that your wife? I said, no, and that's not really. I'm, I'm lying to you. I said, uh, I just met her at, 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 at the rest stop. And she said, you know, she'd marry me if I get her a dilly bar. Guy thought it was funny. Ha, ha, ha. And I went, by the way, do you watch King of the Hill? He went, yeah. Handed him a couple of autographs, you know. So <sighs> it's, it's an amazing thing, man. Uh, uh, Parks and Recreation, I get, I get recognized. In L.A., I get recognized because, you know, it's a yuppie show. Yeah, when I'm in Los Angeles, you see people looking over, looking over, and people are like, "Oh man, you're 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 that Indian guy, right?" I'm like, "Uh, sure am. Happy to be that Indian guy." Um, <laughs> I totally am. 100. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, me, yeah. Indian you know, dude. The Wamapo people have a saying: "Only one who listens hears the cry of the wolf." Uh, so it, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, somewhat of responsibility as well because when I'm an asshole, they go, "Oh, that's the asshole guy," you know. Um, yeah. Or like when I bump my head. You know, I'm going to have to you know, show my face in the world and they're going to be like, what the fuck happened to you? Were you drunk? <laughs> See, you know, I never, actually, was the, chair. the chair was drunk. Not me. The chair was. <laughs> you were so sober and that chair was just a piece of shit. Because once again, like, hey, no, I, no, I, no, no, no. Don't, hey, you'll piss off the wife. That was a damn good chair. I mean, that's a great chair. <laughs> that's a fantastic chair. That chair did great nothing chair. wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm it, thankful that we got two extra ones. Does it kind of suck, though? Um, kind of like having your identity stolen a tiny bit by this character that's so renowned. Yes. I mean, I can't do anything. Um, I mean, I, not that I would ever, ever have, you know, an affair with anyone, but you yeah. can't do anything um, because, you know, you'll get in trouble for it or people will recognize who you are. Um, and and, and it's just, but I love it, man. I love it. That's why I tell people who I am. Before you even meet me, I'll tell you what I do. Um, and it, it's nice. And it, it's it, it's what you, it's it's like they say, it's when people quit asking you, are you that person that you worry about? Um, there is a responsibility. And, it, you know, trust me, man, uh, you're, you're that guy that was fucking the white lady or, or you know, you're the guy that was here. You're like, is this? I'm like, well, um, hey, man, you Not know, really? I mean, I had, I, I no, this is no joke. I was somewhere um, in Texas guy comes up to me says man are you so i hear that you're the voice of john redcorn i said yes i am he tells me my wife loves you man loves you <laughs> and he goes will you give my wife a migraine special and i laughed he said no man he's like i'm serious he's like i'm serious man because there were a couple of swingers you know and yeah, uh, yeah. He, he was like please he's like please man he goes i just want to watch I was like, because that way I can tell my friends that John Redcorn banged my old lady. I'm like, dude, really? He's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, I cannot. I won't. I can no longer that's... heal your wife the way I healed the wife. <laughs> yes, my man. You know? Oh, that's and, a classy and, and, move yes. right there. Because it would have been so easy yeah. with people just throwing it at you to be like, yeah, sure, yes. why not? Migrant yes. special or whatever. Yes. You know, and this is the good thing. I met my wife. I was trying to impress her <laughs> with what I did. She did not have an idea who the fuck I was. Do you watch this? Do you watch that? She's like, yeah. No. That's pretty standard, oh, though. No. That's pretty standard. I'm watching, 
I watch TV all the awesome. time. I'm like, oh, just Danny Trejo. Who? Right. He's fucking, right. you know? Yes, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it, it, it's, it's cool to have that, but it's even better when they don't know who you are. Because, I mean, we felt, I fell in love with the first time I saw her, you know? And that she had no idea who I was. Uh, she went home and told her daughter. Her daughter knew who I was. That was cool. Yeah. Smart you know, girl. That was cool. And her, and her daughter is, is just as beautiful as she is. And uh, are you here, honey? Ellie. <laughs> Ellie. She's here. Come come say hello. Come, it's a family come here. I love it. Come say hello. This. And she's English. Ellie, come here. Is Please, she? ma'am. Like, like yes. English English or American hey! English? Check this out, guys. Hi there. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank Welcome you. to the UK. Hey. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm very I'm very proud to know that you knew who Jonathan was because like I know who he was and I it, it always amazes me. Like right now, I'm really kind of falling over myself doing this interview because I'm like, man, I've spent an elaborate, an obscene amount of time listening to Jonathan's voice and what viewing his work. And the fact I actually get to speak to him just, you know, makes me. Makes and me she's kidding. majorly pissed at me because I got after hit my head. I completely lost it and I completely messed up her room, man. No. I don't I don't know. I just I went. Yeah, I did. It's, I did. How it's not a dare he? I did. I, you know, and it was, it wasn't anything personal. I was just like <laughs> angry because I fucking hit the ground and, you know, I kind of don't really remember it because I haven't slept because I don't want to go to sleep and, and, yeah. and, and not out, you know, because I have little shakes every once in a while. Thank you, Miss Ellie. Thanks for having me. Bye. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I've got little, I got little trimmers going on, you know, because I bumped, I bumped ahead. Um, it was fucking chalky. <laughs> with, uh, so, yeah, man. I'm, I'm glad to do it with uh, because you do a lot of voice acting. You're famous for one of the most famous uh, voices on TV. Um, is it good? I mean, I find myself doing like stupid accents and voices around the house. Um, does it help uh, to be adventurous with different accents, voices? Can it help you get roles and things? Uh, you know what? I, I don't do accents. You no? know, I, I, I've been asked to do certain things, and it, it's, it's, it's like you don't want. Uh, you know, if you want an English actor, English accent, get an English actor. If you yeah. want a Russian guy, get a Russian actor. You know, um, I'm pretty much do the John Redcorn thing. Uh, and yeah. it's a certain cadence that they like. Um, you know, and one of the best jobs I ever did was a rock. It was for a PBS uh, um, story time thing. And I got to play the rock, a rock, uh, which was wonderful. Uh, it was almost John Redcorn. Um, but not quite. As you can tell, the voice is different than I have. So you really have to. And what's, what I'm looking forward to is, hello, I please take your order. Would you like fries with that? I mean, I'm looking forward to working a drive through somewhere, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sign that'd up. be the best. Just like be like a phone operator and be like, hello, yes, I will. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> would, you would you like to increase your AT&T? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, I want to do the, 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 what do you call it? The GPS. You're only an arrow flight away. That'd you know, be an arrow flight away, make a left, you know. Jonathan, if you were to make a GPS of yourself, I would fucking buy that because I feel like oh. I'm going the right way. Like, he's not gonna lead yes. me astray. The yes. motherfucker, yes. you know, he's exactly you are following the road that you should walk. We you should know, uh, that we, kind of thing, you know. Jonathan, we should we should get you to uh to do a hi. This is John Redcorn. You are listening to you suck. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm willing, I'm willing to, man. I'm ready oh, to do fantastic. it. Fantastic, that'd be amazing. Um We'll grab it. Do you end. get people asking um, you that all the time? Do you, are you like, oh, record something from my wife? What do you to say? Something? I do. Yeah, yeah. Somebody, they'll tell me, you know, hey, can you leave a voice message for me? Uh, can you call my friend? Because I, I, I'm so active with the the fans now, uh, I'll call people on their birthday, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or someone will ask me to call someone and do something for them, you know. I'll plow um, their wife. Which, um. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yes. um, And it's great because, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll call somebody, you know, through Facebook, through Messenger. And I'll be, you know, without the bump on the head, of course. And they're like, dude, it's you. I'm like, well, yes, it is. <laughs> and and, and, it, and it enlightens people's day, man, because I'm so blessed uh, to be able to, to, you know, work. I'd like everyone right now, COVID is really taking a, a toll out of everyone in this world. Mm -hmm. And even more so, I'm able to lighten up some people's day, um, make them smile, make them laugh. Um which is really, really important. This, this is why, I mean, when, when I asked you, Tom, to do the show, I know that when you asked me and I showed you my face and you're like, mm. dude, do you really want to do this? I'm like, yes, I do so much because I don't want to let you down like I did last time. 
And, you know, last time I got married, this time I fell on my head. So don't ever ask me to do this show again. I won't. I, re- I absolutely will not, because apparently yes. I'm just the worst luck for you in the what? world. I- my, my wife said she's pregnant. What? I'm- <laughs> oh my- <laughs> Hold on, Fuck we can't promise this, though, because I'd hey, like to... I'd I'm like going to kick do- his ass, I'm going to tell you right now. As soon as I find out who the dad is, I'm kick his ass. <laughs> Tom's like, it wasn't me. <laughs> no, definitely no, not no, me. Exactly. Definitely we, not me. Yeah. It's the first red uh, one. Um, we, we have to do a show that's well, one with concussion and one without concussion, and compare the two. Dude, yeah, it's it's get. I'm a, I'm a little. Ooh, yeah, man. It's like I feel bad for my wife because I'm like, whatever you do, don't let me fall asleep. Yeah. You know, and I've got little tremors going on. They're not as much as they were before. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's so great because she yells at me. Ah! I'm like, what? What? She was just shaking. What? I was. You know. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, dude. And I'm not gonna go to the doctor. I know I need stitches, but. You know, a little bit. It's yeah, man. I'm I I, I yeah, a little bit, but you know no, what? I have taken on my oldness because I was a handsome young man, and as I've gotten older, man. I kind of lost it. I'm like Mickey mm-hmm. Rourke, man. Mickey Rourke <laughs> always said that he wasn't getting work because he was so handsome. So he'd go into boxing classes to have the shit beat out of him. Then he went and had his nose broken, did all these wonderful things, and I do it to myself for free. You know, I fall down. You know. You are your own, uh, your own, your own, your own stunt double now. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh. But the difference being is that Mickey Rourke is aged like an old <clears throat> lady and you've aged like a fucking fine, you know, bourbon. My friend, you are a handsome man. I got, I'm not gonna oh, lie. Like I could see why that dude uh, was like, Hey, fuck my wife, please. Because you know, you look like you oh, do. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Uh, thank you. Now you, you're not just a one trick pony by any stretch of imagination. And no, I'm not trying to be offensive because your one trick happens to be the one trick that everybody in the world wants to do. You also happen to be a fucking dude who likes a little bit of flavor in his life. Tell us about, uh, yes, tell us about your side gig, my friend. I'm excited that you asked that or brought that up. Hi everybody. I'm John Redcorn from King of the Hill. Before you light that fire, before you buy your meat, get you the meat rub that'll make you king of your grill. Red corn, king of the grill, seven magnificent spice blends. My favorite one is, let's see, uh, the Mexican meat rub. Rub right. your meat like a Mexican. Give it the full flavor of San Antonio. So, yes, sir. Mexican. You can go to Jimmy uh, jimmy.app forward slash Jonathan Joss, all lowercase. Uh, I've got my spice uh, items on there. Um mm. Like I said, I got seven different ones. Uh, this one happens to be the gunpowder, which is great on fruit and vegetables. We've got the uh, vaquero fajita, which is just a regular fajita with papain in it, which helps uh, break down the enzymes and makes your meat tender. Yeah. Uh, also have the wild clucker. You know, when you want to get it wild, clucker it. Of course, you Mother have clucker. the jalapeno kicker. You know, th- I like this one a lot. Not only is it spicy, but if you piss them off, throw it in their eyes. It's a whoa, <laughs> pocket sand. Po- po- oh my God. You yes, are a huge And the spicy fajita. But again, all made out of San Antonio. And the great thing, I wish I could read it. There's a little uh, advertisement on the side that talks mm-hmm. about how I grew up a chubby kid. And it wasn't until Hollywood and my success that I could embrace my inner chubbiness. You know, um, because I grew up in a restaurant. My parents had a restaurant and I love food. I love to cook. And, you know, my mom was everything in the world to me. Now I got a wife that's everything to me. Um, So to be able to to uh, bring this to the table, bring it at a family meeting. I was selling maybe a bottle a day, a a bottle a week, you know, Mm -hmm. bottle a month. My wife jumped on board. And man, we are sending it all over the world. You know, nice. um, we're sending packages out um, all because of her. You know, behind every man is a great woman, something like that. I mean, if it wasn't for her, um, I'd still be at the flea market selling this stuff. You know, but now I'm able to <laughs> to, to do shows like this, um, order them on the Jimmy app. You know, everything goes through her, um, and she's able to help me create something. And what's so important is I don't have a lot to offer. You know, I'm unemployed. Um, but to be able to offer something like this, her and I, um, mm-hmm. is very, very special. Uh, because 
you know, in any relationship, you always have issues, you have problems. But when we work together and provide a product for somebody that helps them smile, helps them make their food better, I think we're sharing our love with them. You know, Absolutely. sometimes we don't share our love to each other, but um, we're able to, to, to do this. And it, it makes me so proud that she's jumped on board and just, you know, is making me a better person. To, you know? to have something to fall back on being a, a member of the arts industry, which is obviously yes. uh, not being able to work at the moment, is uh, yes. it's quite lucky at the moment, isn't it? You know. Yes, I'm very, very lucky to be able to, you know, have a little bit of an income that come, that goes to her. Because you know it's all her, uh, so yeah. it goes to her, and I'm able, you know, you know, you know. Plus, I like my boss. Fuck yeah! I mean, what's better than oh. being, you know, your own boss? I tried to do my eyebrow. That hurt. Oh shit! Yeah, Ooh. please don't do that. Don't do the rock right now. Oh man! Um, now you, uh, you said that your your family had a restaurant. What kind of a restaurant was that? It was a Mexican restaurant called El Diamante, it means the diamond, uh, in San Antonio. My parents had it, God, for forty years, and uh, my brother. Uh, didn't want the business. I didn't want the business. So my mom uh, ended up selling it. It's still, it's called Mary Lou's. It's in San Antonio, Texas. It's called Mary Lou's. It's still a restaurant to this day. I go, I've never been in it um, since um, it was sold. Uh, but every time I go by it, I think, wow, you know, what an idiot I was not to go into the family business, you know, but we take a path in life. You know, my mother hmm. always wanted me to do what I wanted to do. And she worked so hard to give me the tools that it took to do what I do. And, uh, you know, it's not a day that I don't think about her. Um, and thankful, you know, I'm just very, very sad that she didn't get the chance to meet Lori. She would have liked her. She hated all the other bitches I was with. But <laughs> she would say. Now, no, but did, if she'd have did she get to, Lori. did she get to view you becoming the actor that you are today? Yes, she did. Uh, she, the room right behind me is where she passed away. She passed away in my arms. I uh, was under hospice, you know. Um, so I helped her make her journey, you know. And she got she got to see it, man. Uh, a great story. Um, one day she called me on the phone, and she's like, "Holy shit!" She goes, "I was reading the newspaper, and I heard you." She put the newspaper on. She was like, "Jonathan, Jonathan." She goes, "God damn it! It was you on the TV." And it was a Walker <laughs> Texas Ranger episode that I did, you know, um, another time we were, uh, going to my uncle, uh, Felix's, uh, funeral and we're in, uh, outside of Brady, Texas in Mason, mm -hmm. Mason, I think it was Mason. Yeah. We anyway, were at a barbecue place and we're having barbecue. Cause that's what you do when people die in Texas, you eat barbecue and, yeah. uh, we're have we're eating there. And my mom, you know, we go out to the car and I see my mom reach under the seat. She takes out her 38, puts it between her legs. She goes, that Peckerwood keeps looking at me, keeps looking at me. What the hell does that Peckerwood want? I didn't realize that. We went, I come back, and there's this, you know, white guy talking to my mom. I'm thinking, oh, shit, my mom's going to shoot him. <laughs> no. He went to my mom and said, is that the man that's on Walker, Texas Ranger? And, of course, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad was a huge, my, my dad was my biggest fan, man. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad, we just thought it was, he'd always tell everybody, John, John, he my, he's my actor, actor son. Um, oh. I used to take my dad on the road with me. I would take him to movies. <clears throat> he moved out to California with me for a while. If I had a chance to go on tour, he'd go with me. You know, he he met Chuck Norris. And I remember the first time he met Chuck Norris, he goes, you're my favorite actor. <laughs> and Chuck Norris goes, I thought that'd be your son. He's like, no, you're my favorite actor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thanks. So it, Thanks, it, was, it, was, it was nice to share that, you know, and, uh, yeah, man, it's just, it, it, you know, you, you, your parents do so much for you um, mm. and you don't realize what they do for you until they're gone, you know, and, and, and I'm so much, I see myself becoming like my mom and my dad, because my dad always fucked up, man. My dad would fall down, uh, he drop stuff, um, and I'm becoming my dad, man, so much. I mean, I'm even wearing my dad's shirt right now, you know. Um, yeah, so I, if your parents are around, hug them. Thank them because you know yeah. what? They sacrifice for you every fucking day, you know? Um, and, and the thing is that parents have flaws like everybody else, you know, and uh, sometimes those flaws are passed on, you know, to, to, to the kids, but you love, you love it. You love it. Mm. 
I love being the fuck up that my dad used to be. You know, I love it, man, so much because I know when I fuck up, my dad would do done the same thing. You know, it, it's interesting because we always, you know, nobody wants to be their parents when you're a kid. You know, you always get told that old, you know, nut, that nut show. They're like, oh, you know, you're gonna end up just like me, and you're like, no way, man, I'm I'm myself. And then you end up becoming your parents and you end up becoming the best part of your parents, which, you know, they instilled into you without you even realizing, like through osmosis. And all of a sudden, like, I'll I'll find myself doing the same thing my dad did or like, as you were saying, you never, you know, appreciate as a kid what if you have them around stuff like that. I fortunately still have both my parents. But as a parent now, like, you know, I have my own three kids. And I feel like I modeled that after them too, you know, cause they didn't mean to have three kids and I totally didn't either. And then, you know, I was like, Oh shit, shit happens. Um, but like when I was, uh, when I was 16, um, I got, I got sick. I had uh, non Hodgkin's lymphoma, which, you know, it's whatever wow. I've been in. I, yeah. It's all good. I'm in remission for a very, very long time. So I'm very, very fortunate. Amen. Um, Amen. So my, I looked at, you know, at the time, you know, I didn't think anything of it because, you know, it was just you know, I was just living life. I was like, whatever, it's fine. I'm fine. And, you know, my parents, I never stopped to think about how hard it was on them until I had my kids. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, shit, my parents must have been freaking out every second of every day, knowing that one of their kids, you know, was in potential trouble. And it's just mm. beautiful to hear you say that because it, I don't feel like it's said enough that we should be appreciating our parents. Like it's an old, once again, it's an old chestnut, but how many times do you actually, you know, not you clearly, cause you do appreciate them. But like, how many times do people say like, Oh, I'm going to call my mom or I'm going to check in on her. Yeah. And they just never do because we always take it for granted that they're still around. Right. Right. I mean, after my mom passed away, I, I you know, caught myself, you know, I'm going to tell my, uh, I'm going to check that. I'm like, Fuck man. Yeah. You know? It, it just, you know, my mother always said I was crazy, to which I responded, you're my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Apple doesn't fall through too far from the tree. They're oh, man. Also. Yes, yes, yes. Now, um, we're we're coming short up on time, um, right on. But, but I got to ask you, um, what's it like working with a dude like Mike Judge? Um, really renowned as one of the greatest animators and voice people of our generation. What's that like? Uh, a genius. A genius. You know, I'd never said more than maybe three words to him, even though I worked with him. Um, I got thrown off the Fox lot one time. Uh, quick story. There was a line read that I had to say, I'd like to remind everyone that this field used to belong to my people. So when they're playing baseball mm-hmm. and they the, the director at the time kept giving me a line reading and you really don't give line readings to people and especially the way she was saying it. And uh I didn't remind you, this is one of my people. I said, oh, you want me to say it like a white lady? So I kept repeating it and repeating it. I ended up making her cry because I insulted her, you know, and uh, I pissed Mike off, man. I pissed Mike off. And uh, I'm at the Shirley Temple room there on the Fox lot, uh, having a beer and uh, eating. And my buddy, my manager at the time says, uh, hey, man, Mike's coming to the table. I was like, oh, fuck. He comes over and says, uh, Jonathan, I'm... Um, I think it would be a good idea for you to leave and not come to the recording after lunch. Oh. To, which I reply, to which I replied, I'd like to remind you that this studio used to belong. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of gave a smirk, man. He smirked and just kind of, and walked away. But a genius, uh, <laughs> he's never hired me for anything else but uh but you know greg daniels did greg daniels was responsible for parks and recreation man yes. and uh it just you know and i apologized you know to greg daniel one time and i said man i said you know i was young and and, and wanted to do the right thing i apologize if i ever gave you a hard time to which he responded i have no idea what you're talking about and that yeah. was just so wonderful because you know we all make mistakes in life um when we're trying to do the right thing or maybe wanting to do the wrong thing. And it's nice to sometimes just forget what happened. Uh, Like my wife always says, just try to move forward. I'm so bad about it, man. I live, you know, in, in the past, you know, Um, and I don't know why, because the present is so beautiful for me and my future, you know, now that I'm married is even more beautiful, but it's kind of hard to be, a man that doesn't really feel like a man because I don't have a job. Um, I drive an old car. 
Um, and, and, you know, I, I want to be more for her. And, uh, and, and, and sometimes I fall down doing it, you know? <laughs> um, I, dude, I, I, I wish you would be less hard on yourself, my friend, but just because for the show, no, man, that, you, you gotta be hard, brother. I mean, uh, you yeah. gotta be, you gotta be your own gotta be worst hard. critic. You gotta be your own worst critic, of course. But the fact is, sir, like, honestly, you, you've been nothing but a gentleman to us. And like, I see, Thank we you, can man. all hear the, like the love dripping out of your words, huh. especially for your out life. Your and eye for life in yeah, literally. Oh, man. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, man. I just, uh, I mean, she's in the other room, so I'm not doing it to kiss ass. Um, I'm sure. doing it because sometimes i can't tell her directly mm. but i can tell a bunch of dickheads like you yes! you know yeah. you know i concur uh, yeah. um okay so really 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 quickly before we before we sign off because we're gonna ask you to give out all the places where they can find you and all that good stuff um alex um what did what do you want jonathan to say really quick before we get off before i forget oh yeah if you wouldn't mind it'd be a great honor um what can we get him to say that, that, that introduces you, Suck? Uh, we could get him to say, uh, sure. hey, this is uh, John Redcorn. Um, you're listening to What's the Difference podcast. Uh, don't change the channel, dickhead, or something. I don't know. Uh, whatever yeah, you think yeah, John yeah. Redcorn would say. But yeah. what, what, uh, what, it, 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 you Suck? Is the name of it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you Suck. You're, you're, watching, yeah. you're watching You Suck. Don't change the channel, dickhead, or something like that. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, everybody, this is John Redcorn, King of the Hill. And you're listening to and watching You Suck. Do me a favor. Don't touch that channel. Don't change it. Don't take it like you did my land. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I love that so much. Oh, my God. Jonathan, please tell everyone where they can find you, where they can find your amazing <laughs> spices, where they can keep track of you, where they can support you, my friend. Where, where oh, can man, these things I greatly appreciate that. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, Jonathan Joss, Facebook. I'll, I'll accept your friendship. Not a problem. You can go to the Jimmy dot app forward slash Jonathan Joss, all lowercase. We also have a King of the Grill Facebook page as well. Um, King of the Grill. Just hit me up there, man. And, and you know, I, I'm also I also do weddings. Uh, I won't be doing one lately after they hit my head. <laughs> but um, I do weddings, uh, bar mitzvahs, you know, whatever you need. I'm for you, man. God. You I, I would love. Again. I would love to. Um, sp first of all, make sure you go to the emergency room or get some medical medical attention seen to your head after this. But um, I would love to speak to you uh, again. <laughs> thank, thank you, doctor. <laughs> but I'd love to speak to I'm you. Not, I'm not going to the doctor. I'm not. Uh, po post COVID, come back on the show. Let us know how life is now. The world's opened again. I'd love to speak to you yeah, post COVID. That'd be that's amazing. why I don't want to go to the doctor, man. Sick people are at the hospital, man. I'm not going there. You're not lying, you dude. know. I mean, that's 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 the most I'm truth. I'm telling I've heard you, man, or what? It, it hurts time. already. I know what the doctor's gonna do. He's gonna shoot some Novocaine in it or whatever. He's gonna stitch. Oh, dude, I've never had a stitch in my life. No, so, no, I'm not. <laughs> never, I've never had a stitch in my life. I mean, I should get my finger done, but dude, it's my wedding finger. Yeah, <laughs> don't touch that fucking finger, man. I'm telling okay, you, guys, man. this has been so much fucking fun. Um, Thank you, man. It, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. Um, generally, what we do now is um, me and Alex are going to continue to nerd out for a few minutes. I finally I watched I finally watched a television show he's been put, pestering me about. Uh, so we're going to do that, but we let our guests go, and I hope you uh, hope you feel Thank better, you, my friend. And all let me know what life. I can do. Fucking A. Um, do when I can do it. Thank you so very much. Tell England hello for me. Have some fish and chips, you know, and play that sissy football game y'all guys play. <laughs> All right, guys. Very much. Thank you very much. Thank from, you. Uh, good from my family, Thanks my wonderful wife. Lord, are you sitting here? No. Yes. Come here. Let's Sorry. say goodbye. Yes. Real quick. I'm a I'm a battered spouse. <laughs> good man. All right, buddy. Y'all take goodbye, care. Josses. Peace. Thank you very today. much. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a great yes, day. Sir. See you now. Uh -huh. Bye, guys. Tally bye. Tally bye. Uh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, I think I'm gonna get some. Yeah, <laughs> give it one for me. Yeah, yeah, sir. Hey, I'm gonna be thinking about you. Bye. <laughs> See you, man. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> I like doing that. <laughs> so like that was that. I can't believe uh by the way, welcome to the later lounge. Um uh, I can't believe he did that after smashing his head up like that. That was fucking <sighs> uh, just to let you guys know, um Tom rang me uh just before he did this interview. Well, but an hour before he did this interview, he's like, he was white as a sheet, white as a sheet, and he was like yeah. Dude, I was just on the phone to Jonathan Joss. He was like, he's like covered in blood. He's banged his head and then he dropped his phone and he fell over and I could hear screaming and I'm like really panicking. And I don't know what to do. And I was just like, oh shit. <laughs> it was just Dude, like I, I we've we've been very fortunate to have a multitude of people agree to come on this little show of ours. And honestly, like we it's always so standard you know we say something we set a time they show up we have this awesome conversation for like an hour and then you know it, it's all over with never have i ever had that happen and i i felt i'm an empath man like i i feel really hard so like when he's sitting there and he's obviously in pain and he's obviously a little concussed i'm like oh man dude i just feel so fucking bad i don't want you to do the show and jonathan was such a dummy he's like no dude we're doing the show i was like i i don't think you want to he's like mm, i know what i want fuck you and i'm like all right you you got it homie you you come on and i actually told alex before and i called him right after i was like dude i think jonathan joss has died in front of me and i don't think he's gonna make it to the show and you were like totally cool man i got this i'm gonna i'm gonna fucking figure out something we got it we'll get a show and i was like oh cool and then Jonathan Joss calls him back, like, you know, five minutes later. He's like, hey, man, what's going on? I'm fine. And I'm like, uh, sure, whatever you say. It, it threw me through a loop. Uh, but honestly, dude, for a man that just got smashed in the fucking dome piece, he was so with it. I, and he, dude, what a, he loves his wife, man. I think that's something we should really take away from, like, that whole episode was uh, even as cool as it was to hear all the cool things that Jonathan Joss said, that, that the dude loves his family, loves his wife. And I, I, that's been, like, an ongoing theme, it seems now, with our shows. Yeah. And to have that devotion uh, later on in life, I think it's really great because yours associate people of of a, an older age to sort of like that sort of thing to be sort of dying out a bit. You know, you've kind of lived your life. Well, yeah, whatever. He's devoted to his wife, and that's not that gives us hope for the future. <laughs> it really does. Like, so, yeah, it does. yeah, and what a cool guy too. What a cool guy. Um, and what I, what I enjoyed about that was, and this isn't this isn't uh, me knocking you at all or in any in any way. I could sit back and just watch you enjoy talking to, to someone you've enjoyed for years. That was really nice. That was really nice. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that, man. It was really good. I did. I did. Thank you for the favor. I, you gave me a platform to be able to do it, dude. You know how this would have happened. I mean, don't go wrong. Jonathan Joss, you know, fucking said himself. He's like, hey, man, I do this for everyone because I'm just appreciative of the fans I have. And that's cool. Like, But without having an avenue to be able to reach out from, to be able to be like, hey, will you come on and do this with us? It, it never would have happened. None of the people, all these awesome people that we've had an opportunity to speak to. And it's all because one day you're just like, hey, man, fucking I think you're kind of funny. Do you want to come and talk with me? Ah, fuck it, man. We, we were a good team across the board, across the board. The USUC guys, they're quite a team. Um, but yeah, uh, we got we got that done. It's great. And what you can see, I'm, I'm done in the American colors. But I've also got are. this amazing flag. Which is exactly what I needed, by the way. I needed it, by the way, because... Are you going to wear it like a cape? Oh, see, I need the see, I need the Union Jack is what I need. So this is American Union Jack flag. How perfect is that? Oh, dude, that's what's up. Fucking, you should sue them for copyright. (laughs) It's a Union Jack American flag. I like it. I like it. You're going to wear it like a cape? Uh, This is, I got it. I wanted to get an American flag for um, Super Bowl. But then I found my wife found this one. I was like, "Oh, that's fucking perfect! The great I can get drunk." I've just I, the reason I was looking at the flag while you're talking. By the way, I didn't know if you guys had um, some sort of ceremony for beer spilt on the American flag. If you kind of like cry about it's, it, it, not really. I nothing mean, like some flag, people man, nothing, don't put it on the floor. Don't fuck on that thing. Don't you fuck on my flag? <laughs> you guys are very precious. Whoa! Flags. You never fuck on a pack of cigarettes um i think that it's more like the dropping of the flag and people are disrespected but the thing is like what's more american than spilling some beer on the american flag i don't think anything i think that's like hugging a bald eagle essentially uh, we've also be like now now go and wipe that off clean it off starch it and make sure it's pims next time okay um 
I feel like the queen probably dabs her mouth with it. You know, when she like spills a little bit of like chowder or something on her cheek, she's like, mm, mm, yeah, mm, I'm so rich. Mm, uh, th- make sure you get it all in, in my mouth next time, Philip. <laughs> ah! She does not suck dick. Ripple, no, she does not. Look at that prissy old lady. She does not suck yeah, dick. Yes, she fucking does. Um, anyway, I'm, I've got the flag for Super Bowl. Obviously, it's Super Bowl weekend. This is going to go out a week after Super Bowl, to which we have uh, a wager going on. Uh, we do. Is- Thank you. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, do you do you have the specifics written down for this wager? Uh, you said that uh, I said that the, the books are going to lose by 10 points, and you reckon that the Chiefs are going to win. Yeah. So, yeah, no, 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 no. it's the other way around. I thought the Bucks are going to win. You thought the Chiefs were going to win. That's it. Well, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that didn't make sense. What I just said. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I said, um, I reckon, I do reckon the Chiefs are going to annihilate Bucks for the first half, and then they're going to be so far ahead, the Bucks will make um, a triumphant comeback, but they'll lose out by 10 points. Yes. And I'm just going with the Buccaneers winning because Tom Brady wants it. He wants it so bad. He wants yeah. it. He wants to beat Patriots fans. Um, and to death what's the uh, what 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 does the winner get? Uh, well, the loser has to make a twenty, a ten minute. Was it ten or fifteen minute? Fifteen minute video. And you stop fucking raising the time. I start off with two, and you're like sixty 10. minute video. Um, <laughs> they got to do a ten Wednesday. minute, a ten minute live uh, pre- presentation on how, why the other person is amazing. Um, I have a, something better now, actually. I just thought about this because I just really mentioned live Wednesdays. How about because this will actually this okay? So how about instead of the the five minute ten minute video, um, the next live that we do, all your answers to everything talked to you about has to be end up resulting about how great the other person is. Be like, hey Tom, how was your week? Be like. It was great, but let me tell you that Alex is weak because he's such a magnificent example of a golden <laughs> god of a British man. Everything's got to be related to the other person for that yes. whole show. In, in the positive, they can't be shitty, it can't be snide. It literally has to, you have to sell it. Like, I mean, like, I got to believe when you're like, Tom's dick is just so fucking luscious. I mean, I don't know what this has to do with me feeding my son dinner, but okay. I, I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good idea, right? Because I know, I know that the we we listen to each other's shows and stuff across the the network, but let's not say anything. Let's not say anything. Like let's let's, let's, let's no. just like not tell the other guys what we're doing, but just fucking do it and see if anybody notices yes. that thing. <laughs> yes, yes, I love this, and it's good for improv. It's it'll be good for make us think on our uh, think on our feet. So I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> but, like, yes. In fact, hold on. When's this episode going out? This is going out on uh, on the seventh. Uh, so Super Bowl would have finished. And I think we would have done a live show. So yeah, this is after the fact. This is we're talking right now about the future that we were talking in the future. So this will have already have happened. I hope you enjoyed it and you thought it was really really funny um, because uh, we're a couple of stand up chaps. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of stand up chaps, um, do you know who was a great stand up chap besides Jonathan Joss? Uh, uh, me. Kevin Feige, you're 100 percent right. Kevin fucking Feige, and the reason that he's such a stand-up gentleman is because he is the brilliant dude that somehow, some way, knew that this crazy fucking television show, Wandavision, was going to be as good as it is. Okay. Alex, I watched all the episodes last night, this morning, and I messaged you while I did it too. Yeah, it was like it was like um, speaking to your mate while he's jacking off and he's. He's nearly there with what what a cute picture that he's found. Oh, this girl's gonna do it for me. Oh my god, no, this one's got bigger boobs. Or oh, oh my god, I just come all over the place. Oh, and I was just like, yeah, was that good? Do you enjoy that? Yeah, okay, that's pretty much what happened. But over one division. Um, now I've got to say before we get into this disclaimer, I did not dislike this 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 TV series from the beginning. I was just impatient. I was gen- I was I was holding my hands up. I was like, fuck this shit. I want explosions and action shit now because that's what we've been getting, right? That's fair enough. If I'm aware that I'm being like that and I'm I'm happy that I'm like that, that's fair enough. Um, I got forced to wait and I'm so fucking glad I did. It was the best fucking fellatio I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, I can understand where that's coming from. Like, I came from a mindset because I love classic television, especially old, like, um, I really loved I Love Lucy, The Brady Bunch, like, anything yeah, on yeah. Mick and Knight. Once again, we all know how much I love TV as a kid. Um, 
and the like the opening I, I it was so daring and they took such a huge chance to do this show because we know Wanda as the superhero you know she lost vision she fucking damn near killed Thanos there was so much going on with you know Wanda Maxinoff it, it was unreal she happens to be Magneto's daughter that hasn't been brought up yet but fucking might spoiler 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 spoilers if you haven't watched WandaVision yeah, stop please, listening yeah. go watch WandaVision but like if episode one is the moment it starts I'm I they do that cue opening and shit. I'm like, oh, my God, I fucking love this so much. Why was Alex so impatient the first couple episodes? And it gets great. It gets even better. And it, you wouldn't tell me anything about it. I really am thankful that, that you did not, because there was a lot going on in this series. A lot of like Pleasantville. Did you watch Pleasantville? Yeah, I did. Elijah Wood. Yeah, I love yeah. him. Um, there's a lot of Pleasantville going on with it, and you have no idea what the fuck is going on. Like, you have no even uh, inkling of what's going on until, like, episode two at the very end. Like, you see a little bits of things, but then they don't tell you anything. And then all of a sudden, you start kind of figuring out what's going on. Once again, spoilers, if you have not seen the show, please go watch it because we're going to talk about it now. Like, she, she pulls a Truman show, essentially, on herself. Yeah, yeah. She's a... Uh pissed off of how the world's treated her because you get you think about uh her life you know scarlet witch i wonder she's had this terrible life where you know found, uh, her, her parents were killed by uh stark's weapon and i've just watched age of ultron now because i wanted to add a bit of context to this you know sort of fresh in the mind uh, and mm. she has this great bit of dialogue her and her brother where the, the missile landed in front of him and for two or three days they, they lay there waiting for tony stark to kill him uh, because this missile, they thought this missile was going to blow up in their face. Like that's just a heartbreaking. And then, and then they they, they sign up to Strucker's um, experiments where they were tortured. Uh, that you know their abilities were just tested over and over and over. And and then uh, they joined forces of Ultron, who then kills her fucking brother. Um, then she <laughs> she gets a fucking guy she loves or robot she loves. Vision gets killed by Thanos, uh, and then the fucking snap happens and all this crazy shit that just goes on that she's just fucking tortured over and over and over again. You can understand why she doesn't want anything to do with anything anymore. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. Yeah. And I love, by the way. Okay. So I, one of my biggest complaints was that we know nearly saw her tear fucking Thanos in half. He, she picks him up. She's like, ah! she's like, I'm going to rip him limb from limb. And um, they mention it in the ser- in the show. She's like, uh, well, she could have taken out Thanos by herself, but he fucking set off the barrage like that fucked everyone up. Um, Rain yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Uh, there was There is a lot going on. Um, I think I've, I'm kind of making, I've watched it twice now, all of it twice, um, apart from the last one. And I'm thinking like, you get these adverts that come through. You see one from uh, from S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes. Uh, is it from S.H.I.E.L.D.? No, you get one Truckers. from... Um, Truckers, Hydra? Strikers. Strucker. What's up? You get yeah. one from Hydra. Strucker. Uh, Star. Hydra? It wasn't Hydra. Yeah, the soap. Wasn't that Hydra? No, no. It was like, I mean, maybe. Maybe there's like a little bit of like subliminal in there. Um, I don't I don't remember all the companies, but it. I, I love that they go along with the generation that they're in. Can Now, quickly, can you tell me what shows they're marked after? Are you that much of an t- old TV aficionado? Can you tell me what shows they were trying to... Well, I, I, um, after every episode, I'm one of these guys that'll go online and just, like, uh, I'll, exactly. I'll search about what things meant. And obviously, the last one um, was Full House with the, the Mary-Kate and Olsen, which was uh, sisters, um, the twins, in that, in that soap. I don't think that was Full House. Is that what it's supposed to be? Because I think it's supposed to be... Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. No. Is that Full House? Mine? I don't know. Uh, yeah. how... which, I, I wrote it soap? down. I wrote it down. Hold on. Hold on. Which God. soap were they in? Fuller House. Fuller House. It's got to be. It says here. Um, well, see, that's the thing. It's like, I, I can't believe I forgot. I'm fucking I'm such an idiot. I feel like I got my head hit, hit by something. Um. Okay. Uh, these are the shows. Leave it to Beaver, yep. The Brady Bunch, and Family Ties. Those are the shows that they were kind of like going after the hardest. And it's it's weird. It's 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 strange, but it's so brilliantly strange the way that they kind of like do it. I love that in the beginning. Like, even though you know, we have the best CGI in the world right now, like it's beautiful. They were still like mocking 
the uh, the effects that they would have had back in like the 1950s. So everything kind of looks like a little. Sh- yeah, dude. Oh, my God. It was great. A little bewitched in there. Excuse me, man. I drank a lot of soda. Um, it, it's surprising. And let's let's jump. OK, so did you recognize Captain America's or Captain uh, Marvel's friend right off the bat? No, not at all. If, if I'm right in saying, uh, I don't forget, you know, I'm pretty sure she's lost a bit of weight since we got the Marvel. Am I right in saying that? I'm pretty yeah. I mean, I don't remember. I I've only I only watched Captain Marvel once. Um she's and a pilot, it, right? Yeah, yeah. She's the she's the friend pilot and stuff, mm. which is cool and everything. I I really dug though, actually, now that since we're talking about her, I liked um them seeing the viewpoints of these people coming back and how that affected people's lives. I thought that was really fucking interesting to view. And like people like, we don't have enough sp- spots for everyone. They're all coming back. Oh, oh my God. And then her mom dying and she has to find out like, cause it, it was nothing to her. It was like, just like Peter Parker said, you know, we were there and we were fighting fucking Thanos or, you know, whatever the fuck it is. And then we came back to our like, we gotta go help. And we jump off. Like it was nothing to them, but everything changed for three years while they were fucking gone. And the look on her face because her mom kicked cancer and then the cancer came back and killed her. It was it was a beautiful thing to watch, dude. Like it was it was so intriguing to kind of see like this character go through these really deep emotions that, you know, usually don't get portrayed like that. It was very honest. Yeah, it really was. Um, but I think I think that the, the best part about it all is. It's how it can go from being really, really silly and really sitcommy to really fucking dark, really fucking dark, very fucking quickly. Like that bit where she's like, um, I forgot her name, the, the woman we're talking about. Well, she turns to him and goes, um, she's like, I was a twin. I had a brother, Pietro. And then she turns to the lady um, and she's like, he was, he was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? Yeah. And she's just like, oh, that was brilliant. She might as well say, what did you say, motherfucker? What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> like, Dude, it was uh, like, once again, I can't believe that Disney is taking it, ch- took a chance on this, but it's really paying off. Like, what's the reception right now? Do you have your computer open and stuff? What's the reception? of? I mean, everyone that we know is saying how brilliant it is, but like, what's the internet saying about it? Do they like it? Do they hate it? Do they, does it confuse them? Uh, no, people love it. Absolutely love it. From what I'm seeing on Facebook, um, uh people are, i mean obviously what's we'll get onto the 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 main spoiler at the minute like about how important one division is um but i think it's the, the, the mysteriousness of it all and plus because it's the mcu's first foray the mcu excuse me the first foray apart from shields members uh, agents of shields was uh, mcu but the, yep. the main mcu is their first foray on tv on disney plus and people are like really digging it like i mean there are a lot of people that are frustrated still um uh, really like but the thing is people were frustrated about the mandalorian at first too which was just it, it's obscene to think that that anyone that can watch the show like that like disney's just fucking killing it right now dude they're really proving a point that you don't you, you can do any avenue you want and you can put out a good product and people will watch it I found an article like, here off a website called mm-hmm. Geek Culture and Other Stuff. So nothing credible. Uh, but this is just the first one I found. And it says, uh, it's been a rough week for Marvel fans. Uh, uh, what with the news that both Black Widow and Fal- Falcon, uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier have been pushed to 2021. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, this is from September fucking 2020. Fuck that. We want something more current. Um, no, no. The people were frustrated up until uh, the last episode, the latest episode. Can we talk about that latest episode, by the way? Because um, we we have now um, just watched uh, an episode from Outside the Dome where, uh, what's her name from? Thor comes in. Oh, Darcy. Darcy. Darcy comes in from Thor. By the way, she looks like she hasn't aged a fucking bit. Thor was, what, no. 2010, 2019? She bathes in virgin's blood, I think, is the rumor. <laughs> I thought she was hot then. She was in Two, two Broke Girls. Yeah, Massive yeah, tits. yeah. What's her, what's her fucking face? Um, she was also like, um, she's been in a whole bunch of stuff. I can't remember what the fuck her name is to save yeah. my life. But yeah, she's a good actress. Yeah, and um, yeah, she comes back. She's uh, qualified uh, in, in, in her field. Uh, and she's like, 
hey guys, I need an old TV. She's like all these stuffy sort of agents that's just running around. She adds a bit of color to it, and I really like that. I think it's fun. Um, and then there's uh, the agent, the FBI agent that people want are dying to get a series made just for him, like an X Files type MCU yes. sh- show where he's just going around looking at weird shit. That, that freaks him out. I love he is such a great character. I love that they pulled him in. That was like one of my favorite because bringing Darcy and I was like, oh, that's cool. I guess you know. Once again, like Thor Ragnarok was an amazing Thor movie. The other Thor movies aren't really my favorite. But okay, so you know, I'll, instead of being uh, ignorant, I brought up the the cast list, and it's uh, Tiana Paris who plays uh, Monica Rambo. Um, so that's who that okay. is. Um, I like her last name by the way, Rambo. 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 John Rambo. Um, <laughs> it's nice being introduced to Sword, by the way, which I think was apparently teased at the end of Captain Marvel. With, was uh, oh yeah, that's right. They did mention Sword, and I'm and like I didn't recognize the symbol at all, but I knew who Sword was from the years of like reading comic books. I I knew who Sword was, and I was like, oh cool, this is how they're gonna do it. it makes sense because they've been doing Guardians of the Galaxy, and they've been talking about doing Nova and all that type of stuff. So it, it, of course makes sense they'd bring up Sword eventually. But um. <laughs> It's um, okay. So the it was cool seeing it from outside the dome without a doubt. It was interesting seeing. I loved when Wanda came out with the fucking helicopter. Like, this year, this yours. And I was like, fuck, that's badass, dude. What I love, what I love, by the way, about that scene, the one of the most powerful moments is you see her well made up and happy and smiley inside that 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 reality she's made. She comes out and she's fucking ruined. Like yeah. the, the pale. Hair's greasy. She didn't give a fuck. She's angry. She's just like, get the fuck off my lawn. Like, <laughs> which is ballsy as shit. Cause she literally took over a whole fucking town. The thing is that like in the, the underlining, like, uh, like plot line or the plot, the plot going on underneath it all is that these people are held hostage, which is kind of fucked, right? She's a superhero, yeah. but she's holding all these people hostage with her mind to make them play out all these things. And I like that little bit though, when, when vision is confronting her about the whole thing. And she's like, what do you think? I just sit there and plan everyone's days and make them go to the dentist office. You could tell that she's really doing it. Like how exhausting that must be. Fuck. It's fucked up when you realize what's actually going on. But that, that scene, this is what I mean, how it goes from like lighthearted to quite sinister very quickly. When, um, when vision gets that email through and then he, he, takes takes the spell off that guy and he speaks to him and he's like he's panicking where's my what where's my sister where's my where's my family i need to get and, and he, she's he's, he's just panicking and you're just like fuck these people are trapped like they're, they're scared shitless like um yeah it's it's it's, it's taking a sinister uh sort of spin and then obviously uh they're about to get to it um him a uh, vision mm. and wonder I thought they were going to that go. That was fucking, awesome. That was what when he faced up to her I was like oh fuck they're gonna go not dead <sighs> This is going to be a few broken vases. Uh, domestic is about to happen. Um, and then there's a knock at the door. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then we see fucking Quicksilver at the door. And you see the back of his head. And I was thinking, oh, fucking hell. They brought Kick-Ass back. No way. And you spin around. <laughs> you see, you spin around uh, and you see it's the it's a Quicksilver from X-Men. Not MCU x-men and i was like whoa there you go the multiverse is now open congratulations kevin foggy you've just introduced the x-men to the mcu that's how they've done it and it's fucking spectacular and it raises the bigger question because as i stated when we started this uh magneto is their father and magneto exists in that world and he's also quicksilver's father so i wonder if this is going to be like that i wonder if like he's being taken there because remember how she said that he re- that she recasted pietro um i wonder if it's going to be because that's the movie representation of that of pietro in the world because they obviously made movies about it they have merchandise and all that shit in the M- in the mcu universe like captain america's universe yes. and there they have merchandise and all that shit and just like in um uh, what's that show? The Boys, you know, where they have like movies made after. I'm sure that they did that somewhere along the lines. Like, there's, you know, a movie inside the movie. So I wonder if that's supposed to be like the uh, movie version of Pietro. In which case, that'd be weird because they're that means they're really saying that the MC universe is our universe, and that's a different thing completely, which is fucking nuts. Or we're just gonna start combining the fucking multi universes of the MCU, which is gonna be even better because that what a weird way to introduce the x-men yeah i mean i think that's that i think that was just a symbol but then again right there, there are things that have happened 
in the MCU right from the very beginning that have just had so much significance to what's been happening right towards the very end. They planned this so fucking well, sort of, you know, 10 years in advance, more than 10 years in advance. And like, that's clever writing. And that is, that's MCU at its best. That there, open the door, seeing that guy, Quicksilver is MCU at its best. I went, no fucking way. Kaz looked at me, well, my wife, excuse me, I'm like, ah, I had a pillow in my hands. I was like, ah! I was like fucking, that's the multiverse open because that is what's going to happen now in, in Doctor Strange. In the new Doctor Strange movie, we're going to see different Spider-Man. And this is all because of what Scarlet Witch has done. Wanda has ripped a whole fo- hole in the continuum. So that's fucking, that's, that shows that she's so powerful. And I was right that this woman is so fucking powerful, she can literally change reality. So, oh, I can't wait. Can't wait to see what comes down yeah. in the next episode. The the question is like, how long do you think they can keep this going though? Because well, like at some point, like it's not really WandaVision. WandaVision is about this little weird thing that's going on right now, but they can't keep that going forever. So what do you think the show's gonna become? Or do you think that it's actually just gonna remain the same? Well, I think it's gonna have a knock-on effect on everything that's been released right now. So like the, you know, everything from the beginning of the MCU right up to end game was all to do with Thanos took a few forks in the road, Ultron, mm. you know, uh, and, and different things that have happened. Uh, but it, ultimately it was all leading towards end game. Now what they've yeah. done is they've, they've made this so that we can go anywhere. You can make anything, um, you know, and we're going to see some exciting shit because um, they can, like, they can literally make, make sport storylines and be like, Oh, no, different reality. Rick and Morty. Here. Well, gone. You know? Oh, that's right. What if? What if it's going to be a cartoon, right? I was about to say, what if? But they, I'm pretty well, they sure are, they, they are announced. making the, the the cartoon, aren't they? The, the guess, yeah. guess, what if stuff. But like anyone can essentially show up in this show, like anyone from the MCU, because like it's going to take a multitude of people to convince Scarlet Witch to drop the bullshit and stop holding everyone hostage. I expected like everyone kept saying like, oh my God, you'll never guess who shows up episode five, motherfuckers. And I was certain it was going to be Hawkeye to try to talk some sense into her. But I was I was pleasantly surprised to see that it, I was kind of also hoping it'd be Magneto. I'd be like, listen, bitch. You're my daughter. Stop being a cunt and let's uh let's go join the Brotherhood. Of I don't evil. think I'd have been as happy if Fastbender would I'm not a big fan of Fastbender, people know that. Um he's a brilliant is- actor, but that scene I will never, ever, ever, ever forgive him for that scene in Alien fucking whatever you want to call it, the recent Covenant. Alien Mill films, where he's talking to himself and being very rapey with himself. It was very fucking weird. I couldn't stand it. Um I, I just don't think you can appreciate his performance, Alex. I think you're jealous. I can blow a flute. Can you blow a flute? <laughs> Would you like to blow my flute? I can blow my own flute. Thank you very much. He could definitely <laughs> blow his own flute. I hear it's huge. Um, Ultron is a big thing as well, because obviously um, Ultron is, is is sort of Jarvis, a little bit of Jarvis and a little bit of Ultron, isn't it? Because Ultron started downloading himself into Jarvis and then the Jarvis took over. So yeah. even if a little bit of Jarvis exists, which which is what they say in the movie, then Ultron survives. So now that Wanda has put Vision back together without the stone, by the way, uh, does yeah, that no mean stone. that, that Ultron, Ultron is now back? It's a good question. And wow. does this also is now here's the other question. Is Vision alive? Really? <sighs> I don't know. I don't, I've, if she's put his, like, his body back together and then. I don't know. Can she just replicate uh, uh, Jarvis and, and I don't know. We're going to get more. I don't know answers. either. Yeah, it, Dude, like I'm once again, I'm very, I was going to watch it no matter what, but I'm glad that you pushed as hard as you did because I definitely would have put this off until the end of the series. Well, until the end of the season, once the season came out, then I'm like, all right, now let's go through it. I would have had like 10 episodes. Do we know the season length yet for the show? Have they announced? Hmm. Um, regardless, I'm getting I nine, the- nine on IMDb, nine episodes. Okay. So I would have waited till episode nine. Then I would have caught up and been like, Oh my God, you're so right. It's so great. But I'm glad you pushed as hard as you did. I end up busting out them. And guys, these episodes are only like a half an hour long. So if you're like, Oh, I don't have time for five hours. You really, it's, it's two and a half hours of your time. And it's going to be two and a half of the greatest hours because it's nothing like we've seen before from the MCU. It's always been superheroes. It's never been anything like this. And the fact that they're taking chances, just like star Wars is taking chances with the Mandalorian. You know, I, th- I think it's definitely worth uh, supporting it just to let them know, Hey, 
I like that you're taking these chances. I don't know who you're talking to, Tom, because I think you're the only person left that has not watched it. <laughs> I'm sure my mom hasn't watched it. What are you saying about my mom? I mean, does your mom listen to to me on the on on you? No, not at all. She doesn't listen to her son at all. She well, tell her to man. Just... Support support a favorite man. My mom, she loves my show. She says I'm a talented, handsome boy, and I should, you know, talk less bad words. I I don't know, man. Like I always wonder, like how that goes if she like tells people because, you know, we're not really PC. You know, we're definitely cleaner than we used to be, but we're Mm. like we definitely still, you know, keep it free flowing because we don't want to lie about ourselves. We we change we change a tiny bit like last week. Um, if you guys had or had not listened, we had the the wonderful and very very awesome Ed Curry on the show, and a little little behind the scenes thing. Um, we're doing the interview and we're just kind of talking, you know, not doing too much. But Alex messages me like like ten minutes into, he's like, "Dude, this guy seems like he's you know got some really strong faith." let's let's tone it back on the language a little bit and i was like yeah totally smart and you can definitely hear the change from where we started to where we ended um so we definitely change a tiny but that's that's more to try to ease our guests into like a you know to make them understand that we want to respect them as people um well, you don't walk into a church and go what's up bitches yeah do I, mean, you know I mean you don't <laughs> i do like my grandfather was a, is the pastor emeritus of a church down in jersey so I just walk in there. I'm like, what? Where's my stool, bitch? I kick people off. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, we've done we've done some great stuff. And uh, oh, whoa. By the way, before we go, we can't mention uh, the uh, the thing that we were talking about on our last show uh, with Dave Cortine, and that was Lent. Lent. Yes. I'm giving up. Uh... All right, guys. So guess what? Even though um, Alex is a witch and I am a person that does not observe any religion at all, because you know why not? Um, we're gonna we're gonna do Lent this year. It's it's in other words just a really good reason to give up something and just try to challenge ourselves. Alex, um, you not that you have a problem with it, but what are you giving up for Lent? I'm giving up beer. Giving up beer. Mm. Drinking some of that Super Bowl pale. I uh, wonder if it talk, tastes like you know um, uh, Tom Brady's dick after playing a whole game a sweaty what's it taste out. like it's nice actually it's hickory's uh at home uh pale ale uh, because because oh. i worked worked with hickory's recently did a competition for him and they sent me a box of food which was nice say thank you Fuck yeah. and it included Shout out to hickory's mm-hmm. if you're uh if you're in the shrewsbury area man definitely stop by hickory's and show them some love i love barbecue when i go to the uk eventually i'll be like where's my barbecue at and i'll i'll be having some hickory's as well um ribs ribs. So, ribs ribs so alex is giving up the beer i am giving up cannabis i can't I know, believe right? it i am still flabbergasted that you said this and i'm not saying you got a problem with it by the way <laughs> i'm really not because you were talking earlier about you've been empathetic 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 towards other people right and i'm the same yes. But I, I like equilibrium i like things to be the same i don't really i like a routine and when things change they get a bit weird. And obviously mm. you enjoy your cannabis. It's a creature comfort, right? So you I take do. that out. <laughs> you take that out of your life. That's a huge fucking change. A beer. I've gone about beer before. The whole keto thing is shit because you can't drink beer, right? Uh, mm. <laughs> so I've done that before. I, I know I can do it. And I'll probably see the benefits too. But I feel like, oh, man, I'm, I'll, hats off to you, man. That's a big Thanks, change. I, 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 okay, so since I was... 17 years old because you know i started smoking like at like 14 started smoking weed but back in you know when you're that young you never smoke weed smoke weed you might like you know smoke a joint or something ever so often but it it didn't become like an everyday thing until i was much older from the age of 17 until 33 i've ingested cannabis at least once a day whether it's to go to bed to relax to enjoy a movie whatever it is cannabis is always coursing through my veins i'm sure you could scrape my veins and probably get high off the blood cells from the amount of time I've smoked cannabis. I've never taken like a ton of time off. So I, I really like the idea of challenging myself to, you know, not be as comfortable as I always am. To, like kind of like live life without it. And don't get me wrong. This is not me saying, oh, I'm going to quit weed because fuck that noise. Weed's awesome. And you should smoke it right now. If you're, unless you're a young kid, if you're a young kid, don't smoke weed. But if you're a, an adult man, you pay your taxes, nothing wrong with having a beer or smoking a joint. Just, you know, be, be responsible with it. So with that being said, I, I like the idea. And once again, it's not a religious thing. It just happens to be something that's coming up. And 40 days is a good challenge point. So 
let's fucking let's do this, buddy. Let's uh let's lent it up. I I want to hear of you guys as well. If you guys are gonna do this as well, get in touch. Uh if you're gonna take part in Lent, I'd love to hear what you're giving up. And if you're successful as well, you can do it with us, you know? Yeah. It doesn't have and, to be it doesn't have to be something that's gonna be good for you either. You can give up uh, playing with Lego, uh give up <laughs> masturbation. Oh, it's hard. You can give um, up murdering people. Give up please give up murdering people right away. Well, don't, don't wait for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, if, you, if you're going to get in touch with us about you giving up murdering people, make sure you give us locations and times. <laughs> and it's the FBI. Uh, places the bodies are buried, things like that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, um, so, Alex, um, you know, yes. fucking this has been it's been really great. It's fucking do you know what's also really great? Uh, anal sex. Both um, anal sex, which is not on our amazing website. Guys, guess what? We have a website. Some we beautiful do. god out there decided that we were worthy enough to give us a website. And those beautiful people are the masters at weborchard.com. Hey, guys, listen. On the real, building websites boring, okay? There's plenty of websites and there's plenty of programs out there like, you can build your own website. Fuck that noise. You don't want to be doing that. That's stupid. It's It takes time out of your busy schedule. You're a busy person. You have shit going on. But guess what? You don't have to build your own website. You can get an amazing functional website just by you know putting a little bit of trust in some people that know better than you. You don't know shit. Neither do I. I'm an idiot. But guess what? These people at Web Orchard, they know everything about building a website. They're going to build you the most functional, beautiful website in the world. You can sell things on it. You can put audio on it. You can put videos on it. They'll let you put anything, including your murder victims on it. They don't get, they don't judge. They're not like other website building companies where they like tell you what you can and can't put on. They'll let you put the. Spot hey, listen, man. Listen, no, our next guest is Pete White from Web Web Watch. Don't tell, don't don't tell lies like that, man. They'll be, be like, "What the fuck did you just say? What did you say about my company? Murder victims? Are you fucking serious?" I'm just saying that Pete does not judge. Is what I'm saying. You know, he's he's a professional guy, man. He doesn't judge. He's he's a you know he understands. So if you guys need a website, or if you look at our website and you're like, hey, that's a fucking beautiful website. You have we have no one else to thank besides P White at Web Orchard. So please go to them and check them out and have them build you a fucking amazing website. If you if I was Pete White now at Web Orchard. Or any other company, and you 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 spending that long to talk about my amazing product, I'd have come like five minutes ago. Like I, you'd been like still going, and if that awkward time where you'd come, it's a little bit sensitive, and you'd be like, "Stop now!" That's, I'm just saying, <laughs> very like very good, but please stop. Hey, Alex, um, what are the amazing shows you can see on our great website? Well, I'm glad you asked because the You Suck Podcasting Network has great shows. There is this show called What's the Difference Podcast with me and Tom Bruno. There is also You Suck Chronicles with those beautiful bastards that are Tom Stevens and Jamie Westwood. And they talk to celebrities. They've just had the daughter of the British Bulldog on their show. It was also... Uh, you suck the weekly bizarre pod stars. I looked up then because there's only one episode left of the season uh, before it goes on a break. But make sure you check them out. So, yeah, there's lots going on. Yeah. We also have live shows going on every week. We have the Wednesday night live show hosted by either Tom Bruno or Tom Stevens. Uh, it's basically us getting together like we're going to the pub, basically. Uh, it's good fun. Um, and then uh, fr- every Friday night at 7.30 is the Weekly Bazaar, uh, but we are taking a break for a little bit uh, to do uh, other things. So. You, you deserve a break, man. You, can't, you, you, know, you can't burn the candle at like six different ends. You got you to gotta take a break sometimes. And listen, guys, we love doing this. We love every second of it. We would do this even if you guys weren't listening, but we appreciate the fact you're listening. But if you could do us a slight little favor. If you could just, you know, subscribe, you know, like, share, check out our YouTube, go down and just, you know, kind of give us a little review sometimes, you know, do anything that's, you know, it's very little work. We promise you it'll take three seconds of your time, but it does everything in the world for us to let people know that. Yeah. Um, are, are you shaking your hat at me? Because you. I was, I was asking for court. like a pauper, like, please. Get I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, put, put a little bit of, you know, a little bit of pence and, you know, not Mike, Pen, not, not Eddie Pence, Mike Pence, you know, neither of them, but put a little, you know, a little something in our, in our hat. You know, we love you and we hope you'll love us back by 
doing us the favor and telling people about us, liking, sharing, subscribing. Go oh my YouTube. god, I completely for oh this has been What's the Difference Podcast. I've been Alex Whiteley. And I'm Tom Bruno. <laughs> I tricked you. Uh catch us next time. Peace out.